way will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. <clears throat> Probably never. However, what I do know, this is still 4F Beauty. I am still Angie. Hopefully you're still watching me in black and white right now. And you are most welcome. You will have seen, I hope, from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it in the description. Today is another one of my retro reviews. It's a retro review. It's a series that I started on my channel a while ago and it kind of fizzled out because I had so many other collabs and stuff that I was doing. And then the lovely Alexis from Hot Modesty, well she contacted me and said, <clears throat> how do you fancy doing a monthly collab together? And I thought that sounded absolutely great. We'd done a pick uh, collab together and she suggested a collab and did I have any ideas and I said well you know I floated the idea of resurrecting the retro review um, and just encouraging people to pull palettes out that they've owned that maybe they've not played with for a while forgotten they'd got because nobody about it is talking about it on YouTube anymore and just give it a play and, and just basically it, it's, it's a way of getting involved in part of the anti-consumerism, anti-waste thing. Um, you know, these big beauty gurus that get sent palettes for free, they use them maybe once or twice, and the next time you see them is in a declutter. Um, most people can't live like that. We can't afford to keep buying all the new palettes. And we don't want to keep buying all the new palettes, we want to enjoy the palettes that we've got because we bought them because we liked them. Okay, caveat, I didn't buy this one. My lovely, lovely 4F family member sent me this, my wonderful Shari. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Thunder palette. This was included in a boxy charm and is the cut down version of the full size Celestial Storm palette. So, I have created my look using the mini palette, Alexis. Has created her look with the full sized Celestial Storm. So, have we used the same colours? Have we done a similar look? There's only one way to find out. Sammy the Sloth is here. He confirms you have the best seat in the house. And it is now time to grab a drink, a grab a snack. Put your feet up and get comfy. Hey my lovelies, I am back from the intro. Right, you will have seen from the intro that this is another retro review. A little bit different this time because long term viewers will probably remember my friend Shari sent me the little mini Celestial Thunder from the boxy charm that she had which looks like this and obviously this is just over half size of the full size Celestial Storm palette. Now I'm going to be using Celestial Thunder. Alexis has the full size Celestial Storm. So it's going to be extremely interesting to see whether we both go for the same colours. Now, last time I used this palette, I used the pink, the orange, the blue, the grey through the crease, and the gunmetal on the lid. So I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. Not quite sure what yet. 
but a little bit different. Now, this does still remain a teaching channel, so uh, the film is very up close and personal, as in it's just my eyes on screen. Um, this is extremely helpful if, for example, you are watching on a phone screen and your eyesight, well, maybe it's not where it could be anymore. Um, because then you can see absolutely exactly what's going on. I do, oh sorry, hay fever season started. I do everything in real time. So if that's going too slow for you, feel free to speed me up. It's really not an issue. Uh, and the other thing to say is that there are times when I look down to add more pigment or clean a brush that you will get a beautiful shot of my widow's peak. You're welcome. I think it's a small trade-off for being able to see what's going on. It's also helpful for me because if I have to wince and stop and gasp with pain, it's far easier to cut that out when it's just my eyes on screen and do it in a way where maybe it's not so obvious there's a cut going on. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a few moments where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. Now, I see so many people say, oh, I've got hooded lids when in actuality they've got deep set eyes. It's an understandable mistake to make because I see big beauty gurus who've got deep set eyes say they've got hooded lids. The thing is, although there are similarities between the lids in the way that the makeup wears through the day, to get the best longevity and to get the best initial look you do need to apply them slightly differently. So the clip will talk you through how to work out which type of eye you have and the workaround for each eye type. That will be up close and personal, just the eyes on screen, so you can absolutely see what's going on. And once that's done, I'll be back to apply some pigments to my eyes. Um, I do have, I'm hoping it's not going to show too much, I do have a bit of a scrape on this cheek. Um, basically I went dizzy with pain in the shower, slipped and fell and caught my face on a metal rack that I have all my shower gels and stuff in. So uh, I took a nice big gouge out the side of my face which is lovely. Um, I have chucked a little bit of concealer over it because it was looking very, very red and angry. Uh, and hopefully once I've got foundation on as well, it won't be too noticeable. But if you have spotted it and you were wondering what it was, well, now you know. Right, I'll see you right after this clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, 
and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, okay. I feel slightly skew if but hopefully it's just my viewfinder that's skew if not me. Oh, maybe. If I'm skew if I apologise, I'll try and fix it before the next film. Right, I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush. It is clay, it's just stained. Um, I do get asked to do more neutral-ish looks. Um, so I'm going to start off with Lunar Eclipse. which is this lovely orange. Now, I always do the Viennese Waltz of blending, which is basically natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do that is because if I just rely on the windscreen wiper, the skin on my eyes, I'm 47 years old now folks, I've lost over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyes moves. But I know slim teenagers who have the same issue. And if you just do the windscreen wiper method, your lid can fold over, you get those telltale white stripes that end up looking a little bit like a barcode. Dead giveaway. Whereas the Viennese Waltz gently manipulates the lid in both directions, so that it hopefully eliminates any white patches. So I'm going to start at the outside of the eye because 
let's face it, it's a far easier to sort out any sudden huge deposits of pigment here when your nose is not in the way. So I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow. And I'm just going to start building this orange up all the way across the lid. Now I did tap off quite well. So Alexis, um, I've been watching her since she was quite a small channel. She's actually, she seems to be bucking the trend. She's actually growing really quickly, which is great to see. Um, a lot of us smaller channels are really, really struggling at the moment. Because we just don't, it's weird. It's, it's every time I get new followers, it seems that I then instantly lose the same amount or more. Um, sometimes they end up coming back within a few days, sometimes they don't. It's 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 bizarre, it really is. I don't quite know. I don't quite know what YouTube are doing at the moment, but they're really not being nice to small subscribers uh, to small channels. So it's nice to see that Alexis somehow has has bucked that trend and is growing nicely so that's that's great to see um like i said i've followed her since she only had i think just over a hundred subs when i first started following her um and i just i loved her positivity and i was also it she wears a hijab and it fascinated me how she manages to do her makeup without getting it all over the hijab. I just. I know full well if I wore one, I would have foundation over it, I'd have powder over it, I'd probably end up wiping the mascara wand over it, no man. So the fact that she doesn't is just amazing. But like I said, the, the biggest thing about her is her positivity. She. You know, even if, say for example, she's opened a boxy charm up or an Ipsy, and it's a pretty shit month, she will still find something positive to say about the contents. And she works in the medical field as well, so she's extremely well versed on things like skincare ingredients, um, sunscreen ingredients, etc. Um, so, you, you know, when, when she gets something like, you know, a vitamin C serum, before she even opens it, she's like, okay, this should be in a dark glass bottle because vitamin C degrades in UV light. You know, it's just little things like that. Little tips that you can pick up from her. So I absolutely love, love, love watching Alexis, I really do. It, uh, I find her manner very calming and soothing. Which, let's face it folks, some days we all need. It's alright, I'd forgotten that I put a load of brushes on my clean washcloth that I use for uh, cleaning my brushes off when I'm doing a look because I was going over to see my god kids yesterday first time I've seen them in over a year rather worryingly the two eldest ones are now both taller than me nah no, that's, that's not allowed it's not allowed at all I'm sorry they need to stop growing immediately. But it, it was lovely to see them. I've missed them so much. I 
Right. I always use a clean washcloth um, or a microfiber cloth or whatever I've got around to clean my brushes off with rather than a colour switch because I've found that they are very, very harsh, especially on your natural hair brushes. Right, I'm going to go into Storm Dust, which is the brown. I don't think I've actually used this colour yet. I've used all of the shimmers at one point or another. And obviously I've used all the colourful colours because, well, it's me, of course I would have. But this is the first time I'm using the brown. I'm going to use the same brush. And I'm just going to do this. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you now follow the new line of where you want your crease to fall. Because the darkest colour recedes backwards. So it tricks the eye into thinking when you're looking at it that this bit is further back. So it's great if you have had to create a new crease. It just tricks the eye into thinking if you look this bit looks significantly deeper than this bit does. I'm really not worried about fallout because I do my foundation afterwards. I used to do my foundation first, um, but since getting into more colourful eye looks, I found it more useful to do it afterwards. I'm just going to pop a little bit on the outer third of the mobile lid. Now obviously I can't see what the heck I'm doing at the moment because I've got this eye closed and I'm blind in this one. So that was very much muscle memory. Hoping I got it in the right place. Now one of the things that I do like to do is just a bit of a flicky line from the corner of my eye heading up towards roughly where the end of my brow will be because where my eyes are very, they've always been runny eyes, I've always had runny eyes um, and hay fever season is really not helping and there are times that I just cannot do a liquid liner because it just there's no point. But by doing this little flick up here and just a little scoop so that it joins in with the colour you've already put down just gives the illusion of a winged liner so it pulls the outer edge of that eye up and just gives it some lift at the edge there. We'll tidy this bit up in just a minute. It's also a good trick if you are just learning to put winged liner on. If you do this with your shadows, you've got a line to follow when putting your winged liner on. That's the dustbin men arriving. It's been day. So if you do hear any background noises, that's why. Now with this eye, you may notice there's a lot more movement. And I've got super, super deep creasing just here, which even the Beanie's Waltz method doesn't always help with. Um, that's because this is the eye that was pulled around a lot when I was a kid and I'm talking five, six years old. When they realised that I wasn't seeing properly. So I do have to break my own rule about not stretching the lid out when I'm putting colours on mobile lid on the inner third because if I don't what happens is they end up 
packing loosely into one of those deep creases and then throughout the day they'll start cascading down and it really gets painful especially if it gets in my eyes so again just do this little little soft line from the outer edge up towards roughly where the edge of your eyebrow will be try and stop it at the top of the colour you've put on and then a little bit of a scoop to join it to the colour you've already blended. I do like Dominique Cosmetics mattes. They, they blend so well. Right, I'm just going to show you how I clean up the edges. I know Will loves that phrase because he uses it in his wig making. Right, powdered with my cellar water on and just nice neat line. Voila! Now, I know a lot of people say, well, you could do the same thing with tape. Yes. You could. The problem is with tape, if it's sticky enough to stop the powder from going underneath it and giving you a smooth line, and then it's going to pull at that really gentle skin just here. You don't want that. Trust and believe. You don't want that. Right, now, regular viewers will know, you never, ever apply a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You apply the pigment to the brush while the brush is dry, then you wet the pigment. So I'm going to go into Eternal Light to start with, and just pick up some pigment on this flat brush. If you've got a loose pigment, by all means go in with a wet brush, it won't hurt it. Uh, I'm going to use an old cheap setting spray, but you can use anything to wet it with. Right, this ferrule here is now wet, so tuck it in your knuckles and spin, because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in. Right, and I'm going to go into the inner part of the eye and just pull that out to roughly where the edge of my pupil is. Roughly. Doesn't matter if I go a little bit further. You can see that's a really pretty sort of champagne-y colour. Right, dry the brush off and go back in and pick up some more. Yeah, you can use any liquid you like. You can use you know, a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. You can use priming spray, a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle and just put fresh water in it each day. Just just remembered not to go in with a wet brush. Now, the way that I apply the pigment to this inner third where I cause as little damage as possible is I gently stretch the lid out only as far as it takes to flatten out the creases. And I apply the pigment and blend it in as quickly as I can and then very gently put the eye back and I just let it spring back and then just finish the edge off the same way I did with my right eye and you can see there's a lot more movement with this eye 
than there was in my other eye. Right, I'm going to go into Fireball. Quite a simple look that I'm doing today. Use two mats, two shimmers. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this on the middle part of the mobile lid. And then with the tip of the bristles, blend it in and fade it in with the mat and then lightly drag the lighter colour across. Like so, to give it a nice blend. Again, dry off the brush, reload. I wonder if Alexis would have chosen these colours, because obviously she's got more colours to choose from than me. She's got the whole the full sized palette. But I just, when I saw films that had got this in, I absolutely fell in love with it. I prefer this to the full size one. So I put on my Instagram if anybody was looking to get rid of theirs because they either didn't like it, didn't want it, or already had the full size one, please let me know. And the wonderful Shari, one of the 4F family, sent me hers. And I couldn't be more thankful. And uh, she included some press on impress nails as well. Because it was round about the start of the lockdown and I was moaning that I couldn't get my nails done. Because I used to have, well you will have seen from the clip, I used to have immaculate nails. These things happen. Bigger things happening, you know, they're all right in my natural nails. They just, they don't grow very long, unfortunately. But yes, the lovely Shari, is, uh, she surprised me a little while ago as well. She bought me one of the Nomad palettes without telling me. Uh, and she also sent me the Nomad Tokyo palette which she knew I'd been lusting after for so long bless her heart, she really is she's an absolute diamond but then all of the 4F babies are now uh, I'm going to pause you I'm going to go off screen I'm going to do some foundation and stuff and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you now for me I've got to wait for a little while but for you it's going to be instant. So I'll see you, well, right now really. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I did my usual soap brow and used the brown shade, the uh, Storm Dust, to just uh, colour them in that slide now. And now I'm going to go for a slightly more tapered blending brush and I'm going to dip into the orange, the Lunar Eclipse, I'm just going to dust that really lightly along the lower lash line. This is, for me, a neutral look. Trust, trust and believe this is a neutral look for me. but it's still interesting. I do like this colour. Right. Uh, highlighter. Which highlighter do I want to use today? I 
think I might go into my Kaleidos Star Surfer. Let's grab a little brush. This is just a lip brush that I bought off of eBay God, decades ago now. I'll put a little bit of this just up under the tail of the brow. Because apparently, folks, her brows droop along with everything else that gravity affects as you age. And they're nice. I really do wonder what Alexis has done with her look. It'd be funny if we've actually chosen the same colours. It's quite funny, the last episode we did, I chose colours that she would normally do and she chose colours that I would normally do. As you can see, I like to put mine in a corner and just run it underneath and just blend it in with the colours. Under the eye. <clears throat> right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some highlight over my face, put some mascara on, put some lippy on, uh, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. Hey my lovely ones, I am back. Of course I could not resist putting on a bright lip. And it's actually one of the NARS, what ones is it? Audacious lipstick. And the shade name just happens to be End. Which of course happens to be my name. Well, I go by Angie usually. So I now have two lipsticks called Angela. My Uomi, Uoma Icon one, which is a rather gorgeous grungy brown nude. And this hot pink one, it has to be said like that, hot pink from NARS. Oh, and one of the things I love about this, ready? Magnetic packaging. Asperger's side of me could play with that for hours. Still waiting on an official diagnosis of that, but you know, COVID kind of uh, still wrong things. But this is my finished look with the Mini Celestial Thunder by Dominique Cosmetics. What do you think? Do you like? Would you wear this look? Would you wear this look with a nude lip? Would you wear this look with a bright lip like I have? actually very 80s with the orange and the hot pink together I quite like that. Hmm. Uh, for people who are asking what else I've got on my face obviously the highlight is the Kaleidos Star Surfer. Foundation today was the Tarte um, God what's it called hang on it's the Maracuja one I think Heart. found sealer I like this because it's the airless pump so it pumps up from the bottom uh, and I'm in shade 13N Fair Neutral um, I like this because it's it's not a flat mat although I have gone over it with my Coty Airspun today it's not a flat mat it still gives you a natural look but it has the kind of longevity that I would want from a foundation. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not as long lasting as full mattes are, but it's very good. Um, the concealer is Redacted Cosmetics, because I'm trying to finish that up because I paid for it, so shade C3. The mascara is uh, Maybelline Sky High. I much prefer that now it's been open a couple of weeks and it's not as wet. Much easier to control. I don't get the spider dots everywhere that I used to. Um, bronzer is my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Look at the pan I'm getting on that. Isn't that amazing? Um, but bearing in mind that's the, the, the bronzer that I've used 
pretty much exclusively for a year. I think I've, there's only been a couple of times I've used a different bronzer. So uh, it shows you get your money's worth out of them. Um, I got lipstick on my teeth. Why didn't you tell me I had lipstick on my teeth? How rude. Better. Um, I think that's it. Oh, I used the um, AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder in shade Brightening, which I don't know if you'll be able to tell with these lights. has got a slight peachy tone to it. So I use that for my under eyes just to give it a little bit of brightness um, and just, you know, and then I used Coty S but over everything else. My setting spray today was of course my Slay All Day in Rose, you all know how much I love those. I mean I was raving about that before I had a discount code with them, so there we go. Um, oh, my brows, I used the Pink Honey honey glue in strawberry sherbet to stick them up with I think that's it folks what did I use for primer today I used my usual antiperspirant primer um, and then I used the mint elf one that's a really really good dupe of the milk you know the, um, the the primer is clear but it's got the green milk writing on the outside and it's, it's kind of sticky? Yeah, the, um, the mint elf one is a really good dupe of that but it, it, has almost, it feels like you're putting toothpaste on your face because it gives you that minty pop and I've noticed that this one, because they actually had it in stock for the first time in about two years the elf jelly pop do primer this is a good dupe for it as well, but without that tingly, minty feeling. So, uh, I think that covers everything. Right, my lovely ones. Uh, if you're one of my 4F beauties, uh, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube do keep unsubscribing you, but they leave my films in your feed, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your notification status because mine keep getting knocked back to personalise which means I get no notifications whatsoever. Not just for me, do that for all the channels that you follow. When you're watching one of their films, before you click play, just double check that you subscribed is still in grey and just double check your, your notification status for that. If you're new here or you've come here from Alexis's channel, Hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, this is a pretty good um, indication of the kind of films that I do. Basically, I'm told I have a very soothing, calming voice. And uh, I, I waffle on about everything and nothing. I throw hints and tips into the mix and basically try and instill my love of makeup into you. Um, hopefully giving you some hints and tips along the way to make your makeup application that little bit easier or quicker or to give you more longevity. If this is the kind of thing that you like the sound of and you want to see more, it would be lovely if you join the 4F family. We are the nicest family, not just on YouTube, but across the whole damn internet. It's super easy to do. You hit the red subscribe button, you turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually flick the switch and send them to you. If, however, uh, you want a bit of me time, then my suggestion would be once you have watched Lexus's film which I shall talk about in just a moment 
I've got a really large back catalogue of films you can watch. I've got other tutorials, I've got other collabs, I've got challenges, I've got tag films, um, product reviews. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So I've said this forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and get comfy with a coffee and a custard cream. And just chill out for a little while watching me apply coloured pigments to various areas of my face. Whilst wittering away in a calming, soothing manner. Now, my 4F babies and anybody else who is watching me first. This is, of course, a collab with the beautiful Alexis. So I'm going to need you, now you've hit the like button left me a little comment about which colours you would have done a look with if you were using this palette. Would you do the same as me or would you have chosen different colours today? And maybe even give me a cheeky little share so that other people can enjoy the fabulousness of this channel. I'm going to need you to go over to Alexis's channel and show her exactly the same kind of love that you always show me. She is such an absolute darling. I know you're all going to fall in love with her. So you're all going to want to subscribe to her. You're going to like her video. You're going to comment on her video. You're going to tell her that you've come across from 4F. And just spread the love, folks. Huh? It's a pretty crappy world right now. So let's spread some love in the small makeup community to prove that we're not all backstabbing assholes. Right, my lovelies, and that is it uh, from me. I now need to go and edit all of this. Well, I need to film the intro and then edit all of this. So, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.